This is the clay sculpt which we are going to be casting in resin. It's done with oil-based clay and sprayed with Cryolon Crystal Clear to protect it with a little bit of doling spray to keep the silicone from running off. Here we have the final brushed on silicone mold. Um, it's got six layers of silicone that was brushed on in ever thicker layers. The first layer was no thickening agent was added. As other layers went on, I added more thickening agent. This is a three part hard shell mold that holds the silicone in place. It's a little sloppy for two reasons. One, it's really thin because rotocasting is a pain if it's heavy. And two, as I ran out of plastic paste halfway through it, so I had to use plaster bandages for one third of it. Once you're done, you can just remove the hard shell and then take your X-Acto knife and cut off the back so you can pull off the uh, silicone mold from the model. You see all the details retained. There's no air bubbles. It turned out really nicely. Here we have a plexiglass shield with a pore hole cut in the middle of it. I use this to keep the resin from sloshing out when I'm rotocasting it and I just glue it in place with a little bit of silicone. When working with the resin, you should work outdoors because the fumes can be a bit toxic. Here are all the supplies with some plastic cups, some uh, Stow Strong tint to tint the resin. Uh, I have my lines on the cups marking the uh, measuring points and some cleanup materials. I know this mold's going to take about four cups total, so I pour two cups of Part B into a plastic cup to mix the tint into. And I just use a few drops of this flesh color tint. It's very strong. You only need about six or seven drops for the whole thing. You don't want to use too much tint because if you do, you'll lose translucency. Here I am pouring the equal parts of part A and part B into the cups I prepared earlier. Then I mix both part A and part B into a third cup and stir really quickly. This I have about five minutes to work with this stuff before it kicks off. Stir, stir, stir. Okay, so now I pour it into the mold, try to work as quickly as I can, and it's really important that once you have it in there to keep this thing moving right away, you want to coat the entire inside with resin as smoothly as possible, and use that little plexiglass window to uh, keep an eye on where, the, where it's all flowing and try to get in all the little nooks and crevices. You'll have to do this about four times with, to f get a good thickness for the final head. So here I am, I'm going to repeat this, I'm not going to bother showing you the repeating, but it's just the same process four times over, four cups total, and here's what you get. The final resin head that's semi-translucent, fleshy color, ready to be painted. And I paint this with translucent airbrush paints, and this is the final version. There you go. Finished Frankenstein.